the thing is, uh, I mentioned before, when this enlarges, usually what you'll notice is a difficulty in urinating, either starting your stream or, or having a strong stream or getting up at night uh, to urinate. Now, one thing you can do to sort of see if that is your issue, particularly if you're getting up at night. And that's really important because that, that's one of the things I address right off the bat when I'm working with clients is sleep because most of your testosterone and your morning wood, of course, all happens during sleep. So if you're not getting good quality sleep, um, then you are you know, not going to get the same kind of testosterone production and you not going to have the same kind of morning wood. And when you're waking up at night to go pee, the issue with that is, say you wake up in the middle of an REM cycle, well, then you don't go right back into REM. You have to go back down into deep and then back up into REM again. So you're going to miss some of that REM sleep that you would have gotten if you didn't have to get up to pee. And once again, just to remind you, REM is where most of your testosterone is produced and also where morning wood occurs. So we want to try to get as solid sleep as possible, right? Restful. Ideally, your head hits the pillow. You go to sleep very quickly. And the next thing you know, you're waking up in the morning and you're feeling really refreshed. That is going to be great for your bedroom performance. So if you are waking up to pee, what you can do is, um, assuming you, know, you got to look at your blood pressure, okay? If you got high blood pressure, you might not want to use the strategy. But one thing what sodium will do, and I'm talking about high quality sea salt, like Redmond's Real Salt or Himalayan Pink Salt, something that has lots of trace minerals, not just sodium and chloride. If you get that in your system, that will uh, add it to your water, right? It'll help you absorb the water better, which is less likely that you're going to pee it out because your body's absorbing it better. But also that sodium helps your body create something called ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And that hormone is what suppresses the urge to pee. So not making, your, not making it so salty that it tastes like salt water, but just adding some salt into it so that it absorbs better in your body and it, your body produces more of this ADH. And um, that might help you sleep through the night if that's your issue. If it's not affecting that and you're still having to get up to pee, you really might want to go get your prostate checked out. OK, uh, all men should be having their prostates checked out, especially when they're over the age of 50. And um, because, you know, serious problems like prostate cancer, it, prostate cancer is almost on par with breast cancer. It's that prevalent. So you want to stay on top of that. Typically, you would get what's called a PSA test, which would help measure to see if there's any problems going on with the prostate. Um, this is another um, picture of the prostate. And what we're seeing here, so here's the bladder, here's the urethra. So this comes all the way down through the prostate into your penis. That's what you pee out of, the urethra. And if you look, though, as it comes into the prostate, um, one of the things it goes through, actually, this is not a great picture. Let me go to this one first. And if you look, you know, this urethra coming through here, if this prostate's enlarged, you see how it constricts it? And once again, that can make it very difficult um, to start urination, keep urination going. And also, since it can't come out as much, it builds up pressure. And that's what builds up that urge to pee, feeling like you need to pee. Um, so that just sort of illustrates what I was talking about. Now, let's go to this one. And um, what I want you to pay attention to here is this is the pelvic floor muscles right here. And you see how... Uh, the urethra coming out of the bladder goes through the prostate, through the pelvic floor muscles, into the penis, and that's where you urinate. So the reason this is important is um, particularly if you have had prostate issues, so you've had prostate cancer and you've gone through treatment like uh, chemo or surgery or radiation, sometimes what can happen through those treatments is you will develop incontinence. Okay, to where this system up here is not working so well. And you, when you feel like you need to pee, you got to go immediately. So one of the things they'll teach you, and part of what we're talking about today of these pelvic floor muscles, is getting these pelvic floor muscles toned enough 
to where um, it can compensate for what you lose in the prostate in terms of being able to hold that urine in. Okay, so the, it's like a, it's like almost a, a backup system where the pelvic floors can be used almost as a backup system to help with your incontinence. So that's important to keep in mind too, is uh, when you strengthen the pelvic floor, you also uh, improve your ability to, uh, you know, stop yourself from the need to uh, urinate right there <laughs> if you're having incontinent problems. So the next thing I'm going to talk about here is um, the connection between the brain and the pelvic floor. If you would like help with your unique and personal situation from us, I put a link below that will explain all the different ways that we can help you get and maintain superior stage four rock solid hardness and lasting power both permanently and naturally at any age. Make sure you like and subscribe for more tips to attain elite level bedroom performance and I will see you in the next one.